This is Jill. Jill is a management consultant. She loves what she does, and she's also great at her job. Her work is exciting, and she loves the people she works with. But there's just one thing that Jill has been struggling with, and it's been taking a toll on her performance at work. Jill has been having sexual dysfunctions. She has persistently been lacking sexual desire, which has caused her stress and interpersonal difficulties. So she's going to go see her doctor to see if there's anything he can do about it. Dr. Cohen is a seasoned doctor. He has known Jill for years. After running a few tests and exams on Jill, he diagnoses her with hypoactive sexual desire disorder, also known as HSDD. He's pleased to tell her that there is a first ever approved drug treatment for it called phlebanserin. Dr. Cohen is excited to tell Jill all about phlebanserin. But before we dive into phlebanserin, let's understand what HSDD is first. HSDD is the most common female sexual dysfunction. It is characterized by persistent or recurring low sexual desire for sexual activity, which causes marked distress and interpersonal difficulty. It is not due to a non-sexual mental disorder, coexisting medical or psychiatric conditions. It is also not due to problems within the relationship. When you have HSDD, you have low levels of dopamine and noradrenaline, and high levels of serotonin in the brain. Now with Flabanserin, it is the first approved drug treatment for HSDD. Flabanserin was first developed by Bowringer Ingelheim, a German pharmaceutical company, and the pill was later acquired by Sprout Pharmaceutical. Flabanserin works as a multifunctional serotonin agonist antagonist that passes through the blood-brain barrier by diffusion and selectively restores prefrontal cortex control over the brain's motivation and reward structures, enabling sexual desire to manifest. Essentially, it motivates sexual desire by rebalancing neurotransmitters that influence sexual desire, specifically by increasing levels of dopamine and neoprenephrine, both which are responsible for sexual excitement, while transiently decreasing serotonin, which is responsible for sexual inhibition. And voila, just watch the magic happen. Flubanserin is not to be misunderstood and confused as a performance enhancement drug, which is what Viagra is for men. It does not treat erectile dysfunction as it is intended to increase sexual desire, not performance. Flubanserin is taken once daily at bedtime. This is to help decrease the risk of adverse events due to possible hypotension and central nervous system depression. There are side effects to the use of flumbacerin. Common effects include dizziness, nausea, and fatigue. The more severe side effects include extreme low blood pressure as well as the loss of consciousness to the point of sedation. These risks increase when the drug is taken with other drugs or with alcohol. Now you're probably wondering why this drug didn't exist earlier. As much as it is a great resolution to helping women reach their sexual desires, Flobanserin's approval with the FDA was quite challenging. Flobanserin went through a very unique approval process. The drug had to be reviewed three times by the FDA and was discussed twice at public advisory committee meetings. This is due to the drug's complex development history. Initially, it was developed by Boehringer Ingelheim as an antidepressant, but it failed to demonstrate efficacy. The drug was more effective in participants' response regarding their sex drive rather than depression. Therefore, development of the drug then shifted to a potential treatment for HSDD. The trials showed a positive effect on sexual desire, and this was assessed against the Female Sexual Function Index. This was further taken to the Public Advisory Committee to evaluate. Unfortunately, it failed to meet the primary endpoint as described by the Advisory Committee. The FDA rejected the studies at this point, and this was in June 2010. In October 2010, Boehringer said it would discontinue the development of flibanserin. It was at this time, Spark Pharmaceutical raised $5 million in equity financing from 61 investors to continue the development of flibanserin. In 2012, Sprout acquired Boehringer Ingelheim's rights to flabanserin. In 2013, Sprout completed a new Phase 3 trial, which was successful in achieving sexual events and sexual desire, as well as a reduction of distress. Because treatment effects in trial were small and the benefit-risk profile was outweighed, the FDA rejected flabanserin once again. The rejections prompted controversial allegations in regards to the FDA being gender biased. There was a claim that there had been more than 20 drugs approved for male sexual dysfunctions and none for women at this point in time. 
An advocacy group called Even the Score was formed to advocate for what it called gender equality and access to treatments for sexual dysfunctions. The allegations and the claims were rejected by the FDA because there are no approved products for low sexual desire in men and the 26 medications include multiple formulations of testosterone. After the allegations, Sprout Pharmaceutical completed the additional after-effect and side-effect studies on over 2,000 women with HSDD. Their results showed that 10% more patients treated with the Sprout drug reported meaningful improvements on satisfying sexual events, desire, and decreasing distress. Sprout submitted Flavansorin for a third review. On June 4, 2015, the FDA had another hearing with the Advisory Committee's involvement in which the advisory committee voted 18 to 6 in favor of recommending approval of the drug, provided certain risk management options were implemented. The FDA required a box warning highlighting the drug's risks and an alcohol contraindication. Furthermore, the drug is only available from certified healthcare professionals approved to dispense Sprout's drug. Healthcare professionals need to have a signed agreement with the patient's abstinence from alcohol before prescribing this drug. Two months later, on August 18, 2015, the FDA announced its approval of Fobanserin to be sold as Addy. And on October 17, 2015, Addy was available for prescription in the United States. As you can see, there's been a lot of controversy in regards to Fobanserin for women's rights as well as controversial regulatory decisions at the intersection of science, policy, and advocacy. From purely a demand standpoint, the prevalence of HSDD ranged from 6 to 13% in Europe and 12 to 19% in the United States. Whether this is a debate about gender bias, women's rights, or political advocacy, Flabanserin provides meaningful relief to women suffering from a common sexual dysfunction. It is an important addition to the field of women's health. With Flabanserin, Jill can now go back to the office. Feeling confident and stress-free, and get back to doing what she loves.